Candace's Big Podcast. It's Build a Big Podcast, the marketing podcast for podcasters. I'm David Hooper. Bigpodcast.com is the website. This podcast is all about how to bring more people to your podcast, make people care about your podcast, make you a host that people want to listen to, and make content that helps people. This is the audio version of my newsletter, Big Podcast Insider. If you want that, and you should get it. It's newsletter.bigpodcast.com. It goes out every Friday morning. The issue that I've got here, it is about social media. As a podcaster, do you need social media? That's the question. The answer, no. You don't need it. And by that, I mean, it's not absolutely essential, but it can help you to do two things. One, social media will help you to connect with people such as potential guests that you would not otherwise be able to reach. I cannot tell you how many people that I have reached out to via a tweet. The second thing is it will show your humanity and approachability. Let me explain what I mean by these things. I cannot tell you how many podcast interviews that I have booked where the process started with a simple message on Twitter. And by that, I mean a public response, not even a DM. Also. Social media is a great way to keep in touch with people that you already know. You don't have to send long emails. You don't have to pick up the phone, get together in person. It's a no pressure way to keep relationships moving forward. Let's ask, send you a message. Hey, how's it going? Saw your article. Thought it was great. Heard your podcast. Thought it was great. Thought this would help you. Super quick message. It reminds you that I'm still alive. You respond back to me. Hey, thanks. I'll check that out. Done. You could argue that it's a facade. Maybe it is, but it is also a quick message, not unlike a text message for somebody that maybe you don't know well enough to send a text message to. Maybe you don't have their number. It's an opportunity for you to get in front of people. That's one of the best things about podcasting. That's one of the greatest things about this newsletter that I mentioned. When I release a podcast episode, you release a podcast episode, you send out a newsletter, you are landing in somebody's box or in somebody's feed. All those downloads that you've got for your podcast, you realize that not every episode that is downloaded is listened to. Some of those episodes that are listened to, I would argue most of them are not listened to all the way through. However, if I see your podcast in my feed, I think about you, I get more familiar with you. There's benefit to that, even if that is not consumed. As I go through the social media stuff that's in this issue, I want you to forget about followers. The real power of this is that one-on-one interaction that you've got with people who you meet, as well as current listeners who are watching what you do on social media. I've talked about this in my book, Big Podcast. Approachability is huge. You want to be one of those people that when somebody hears you, those listeners feel that they can talk to you. They can hang out with you. Well, they can see that in your social media. Maybe it's a photo of you playing with your dog. Maybe it's the way you interact with people. That's another great reason for you to do interviews, by the way. When people hear you talking to other people, they get to know a lot about you beyond something like this podcast, a monologue. I do have one thing for you if you are trying to build a bigger audience for your social media. The Big Podcast Instagram page. It's at Big Podcast One, numeral one. If you go there, and you send me a photo of where you record your podcast, I will put that photo on our social media. I will let people know about your podcast, what you record, the equipment that you use. If you're looking to connect with other podcasters, it is a great way to do it. At Big Podcast One, that's the username, instagram.com slash at podcast one. First article in this issue, why you should consider video for your podcast. I do not like video podcast. I just finished an interview. I use clean feed for my remote interviews. The guy interviewed, he said, I've never used clean feed. Tell me more about it. So, well, the BBC uses clean feed. A lot of big radio companies use clean feed. It is the best for getting an audio recording. I asked him what he used. He mentioned another company. They use video in addition to audio. And I said, yeah, you know, that's great. And there's reasons why you might want to use video. I think if you're a beginning podcaster, especially because we're used to seeing people when we interact with them, sometimes it's easier for you to interact with people when you've got those visual cues. However, what it does when you do that 
is it changes the nature of your conversation because I'm seeing those visual cues. I see something behind you. You know, I'm in Nashville. Maybe I see a guitar behind you. Ask you about that guitar behind you. Hey man, what kind of guitar is that hanging behind you? We have a nice point of interaction there. That's not helping the people that can't see you. You know who can't see you? Your podcast listeners. Unless you've got a podcast that also goes out on video. So let's talk about video. And I'll get a little bit more into this because that is not the best way for you to distribute your podcast. Not if you've got a talking head video. These are some video stats you need to be aware of. Over 100 million people watch YouTube TV on their TV screens each month. That's United States only. That's not the world. 100 million people watch YouTube TV on their TV screens each month in the US. Just the United States. YouTube has over 2 billion active monthly users. 2 billion. Do the math on that. About a quarter of the world. That is a lot of users. YouTube streams over 1 billion hours of video every day. 54% of people want marketers to produce more video content. On Facebook, 75 million people access their video platform every day. So there are a lot of people watching videos. And this is one of the reasons that you see a lot of podcasters go over to YouTube or start doing videos. It's what I call playing in traffic. Because there are a lot of people there, they can catch crumbs. And they think, oh man, I've got 10,000 people on YouTube. Didn't have that many people on my podcast. Well, it's a different thing. I talk about that kind of stuff here. One of those big differences, and this is one of the things that I like about audio, is that you have far more access to people via audio since audio can be consumed in cars or while doing other things. You're at the gym, taking a walk around the neighborhood, washing dishes, mowing the lawn. I know people, even with a loud lawnmower, they've got headphones in their ears. They are listening to podcasts while they're doing that. You cannot do that with video. With that said, video does have its place and that's the opportunity for you. Bringing in video when it helps. I do not think that it helps to simply video yourself when you record your podcast, unless you've got an interesting studio. We've all seen videos of Howard Stern doing his radio show. That's interesting. Multi-cameras. It's not bad. He also has celebrity guests. He has performances there. Joe Rogan does video. Is it that interesting? Eh, Well, he's got the studio. Not that interesting, but that's probably better than what most podcasts do, which is put up what I call Zoom video, talking head videos. It's a split screen. It's got you, maybe a co-host, maybe a guest or two. Split screen video, not that interesting to watch. Unfortunately, those videos are so easy, people think, oh man, I'll just throw them up there. I'll just throw it up there. What the hell? It's easy. Can finish it out, automatically upload it. Well, That can actually hurt your podcast. I hope that you are editing your podcast. Every single podcast needs to be edited. Video is not as easy to edit. It jumps around like... Watch some of these millennial Gen Z YouTubers. They can't say more than a sentence without doing a jump cut. They're over here. They're over there. They're over here. They're there. They're up. They're down. They're upside down. Every sentence is a different cut. For God's sake, man. Learn how to string a couple sentences together. But we would never know that if they weren't showing us the video. And that's where it actually hurts you. Makes some people nervous. Oh, I can't watch that. (laughs) Especially if you're going to an older market. Somebody who actually has an attention span. Somebody who wants to learn something from you, not simply be entertained. And here's a bigger thing about audio that you can really take advantage of. Theater of the mind. Theater of the mind. That is available to you in radio, podcasting, audiobooks. You kill that when people see you. It looks great if you're Howard Stern. You've got a studio that looks amazing. It's lit. You, of course, sound good because you're in professional radio. You've got multiple cameras. You've got a guy there engineering it. And you're good at doing this stuff live where you don't have to worry about the edits as much as you would if you were not as experienced as somebody like Howard Stern. It looks bad if you've got a single camera or these webcams with a split video and your podcast doesn't make that sense. You don't know how to drive the show. 
It looks bad if you're in your living room and the cat is walking behind you. It looks bad if you're doing a podcast and you're having a serious conversation and your kid walks in. Just think about this stuff. Video is great when it works, but you've got to put the time in on video just as much as you would on your podcast audio. You can't do it as an afterthought if you want to grow your audience that way, even when you're playing in traffic. That's why you see so many podcasts that are doing well with the audio version. You go to the official YouTube channel where they've got that Zoom video. Not so well. Don't be like that. That kills the illusion by itself. Even if somebody doesn't watch the video, you got this popular podcast and you're acting like it's a popular podcast. They go watch your video. They see you've had a hundred listeners. Oh, no, man. That's killing this perceived reputation that you've developed with your listeners. Next up, James Clear's Instagram strategy. This will grow your podcast. James Clear is the author of Atomic Habits. You may have read that book. He's got a newsletter himself. That newsletter goes out to 1 million people each week. And on social media, specifically Instagram, 561,000 people follow him. On that Instagram page, which is James Clear, C-L-E-A-R, that's the username. Let's talk about how he makes the most of those Instagram followers. I've got an article in this newsletter, newsletter newsletter.bigpodcast.com. This breaks it down, but specifically what he does is he's got a less is more strategy where he sends people to that newsletter. He doesn't have a link in bio with a link tree. He doesn't have a ton of options for you to choose from. He has an example of the newsletter. He's got an example of his book that you can get when you sign up for the newsletter. A very focused message. He's super clear on what he wants people to do. If you want to see an alternate version of that, I'm driving people to my audiobook via the big podcast Instagram page. You can go there and see what I'm doing to drive people to the audiobook. I've got a free audiobook offer. You would actually like that audiobook. It's called Big Podcast. It is about how to grow your podcast audience. It is free with an audible trial. You can find out more information by going to the Instagram page, instagram.com slash big podcast one. While you were there, Send me that still photo of where you record your podcast. Unlike video, picture paints a thousand words. And while I'm on the subject, let's talk about the difference between that still photo that you're going to send me and the video that I just advised you maybe not to do unless you're in a cool studio. I get photos all the time from people who are recording in bedrooms, in closets, in their cars, that's theater of the mind. I can see some of it and I can hear you and I can be amazed by your podcast. And when I see that photo, be amazed even more like, wow, he recorded that in a car. It lets me fill in the blanks. That's important. That's theater of the mind. It teases you. If you want to take advantage of that, I'm happy to help you do that. Drive some more people to your podcast and to your social media, instagram.com slash big podcast one, get that free book. Send me a photo of your studio. I will help you get the word out about what you're doing. Next up, more Instagram. Five new time-saving Instagram features for podcasters. Instagram has just added five built-in features designed to help you create better content. Until now, and this is one of the things that I hated about Instagram, a lot of publishing to Instagram was done via your phone. Working via your phone is great if you want to take a photo on your phone and put it on Instagram immediately. But what if you want to do audio? What if you want to edit that audio? What if you got video that you want to edit? What if you want to do photos that you want to edit or have a long description where you're communicating to your audience that way? Well, desktop is better for that. Until now, you had to use a third-party service. I've got one that I recommend. It's called Publer. This is all linked up at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Instagram is changing this. They have their own desktop application. That is coming soon be able to publish directly from your desktop. It's already available to some people. It may be available to you. If you want to find out, this article has the info, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. It's not like the blue check mark where it's not available to everybody. It's not available to everybody yet. Let me add that. Instagram is a big company. They reach a lot of people. Changes are slow. This kind of thing is a massive undertaking. So they're rolling it out slowly just a few people at a time. It's going to get to you soon. I would say weeks, not months. Again, it may already be there for you. If you want to find out about it, and if you want to be prepared for it, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. 
Next item, how to conduct a social media audit. When it comes to a new social media opportunity, an app, an outlet, whatever you want to call that, if you're like me, at the very least, what you will do is you will sign up on that outlet and you will grab your username. You may, while you're on there, throw up a bunch of posts, photos, videos, just to see if anything sticks because you don't know. Instagram had a lot of knockoffs when it came on, like pick please. If you're on Android, you might remember that. Pick please. It was great until it disappeared. Now Instagram has taken over. But let's say it didn't. Let's say Instagram had competition. Well, it's good to have the same username. So when a new outlet comes online, that's my suggestion to you. Get that username. That is the first part of the strategy. Reserving the username that you want is a very smart move because you never know when something's going to take off and you can't go back. Once it's taken, It is taken. But the downside of this is that you probably have a lot of unused social media accounts. And even the ones that you do use, it's good for you to review them to make sure that everything is up to speed with communicating who you are and where you are now. Because we change. You've got a podcast. It's a living, breathing thing. And you know that if I went back a year ago on your podcast, I would hear something probably a lot different than what you're doing now. At the very least, there'd be some little tweaks. Maybe the lead magnet is a little bit different. Maybe the tag, the hook is a little bit different. Well, you want to update these social media accounts. And that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about conducting a social media audit. This is a plan that will help you make your social media accounts work for you. It is linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Twitter my favorite social media outlet. I've already talked about it. This is how I reach out to people and people see me reaching out. They see me working. It helps my approachability. This guy spent $716 on seven Twitter growth courses in the last 40 days. He's sharing what he has learned. The big takeaways. Twitter is not what it used to be as far as broadcasting. If you put a tweet up, it's got a half-life of just a few minutes. Meaning that it might reach 100 people, five minutes is going to reach 50 people. 10 minutes from now, five minutes later, it's going to reach 25. You see what I'm saying? 25, 12 and a half, six and a quarter. You're reaching fewer and fewer people in just a few minutes, and pretty much you're down to none. I've already said this. I don't worry about the followers that I have on Twitter. That's the reason, the half life. It's not what it was. But if I send a direct message to somebody, that's a whole nother thing. The flip side of this, though, this is why growth is important to you, is that if I reach out to somebody to be a guest on my podcast, this guy goes to look at my Twitter profile, I need to look like I've got it going on. If I've got 10 followers, 50 followers, this guy's going to think, oh, no, why should I even respond? If I've got a few thousand followers, 10,000, 20,000, 100,000 followers, he's going to pay a little bit more attention. That is the main reason for you to focus on growth of your Twitter account. It's worth a look. It's a quick read and it will help you. Like I said, seven Twitter growth courses. This guy went through everything and he shares it with you. It's linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Next element, how to spy on your competition and your podcast listeners. That sounds harsh. We think of spying as in somebody secretly watching me. (laughs) You forget those spam emails. I've been secretly watching you on your video camera and I know what you've been doing. Send me Bitcoin money. (laughs) If you ever get one of those, by the way, those are fake. They should be going in your spam folder. I know people that have paid them though. I talked to somebody. She said, yeah, I paid it. I said, you gotta be kidding me. Anyway, I guess it works because you see people doing it. But when I say spy, I'm talking about people watching what you do. For example, this podcast, if you want to spy on this podcast by listening to it, I want you to do that. That's why I put this podcast out. Social media, people want you to look at their social media and you can learn a lot from the social media of people. I call it social listening. It's an audience research method where you monitor social media, websites, maybe forums for mentions of specific topics, brands, product names, people, attitudes. You can do this on Amazon reviews. You can learn a lot about products by looking at Amazon reviews, what people like, what people don't like, the frustrations they have, the problems they are trying to solve. 
If you want to have podcast episodes that really connect with listeners, you need to listen to them. My suggestion is what I'm talking about here, social listening, watch what they are doing, watch what they are talking about, observe, but also ask them questions. You can do this via social media. The best way I've found is one-on-one conversations. I like to do it via phone. I do phone calls all the time with people who are in the market that I am in. I talk to podcasters one-on-one on the phone all the time. That's how I keep in touch with podcasters. That's how I can do this podcast episode. And you say, oh, I was just thinking about that. How do I make the most of social media? This is how I know it. I've been talking to people like you. How to do that? It's linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Next up, how to automate your podcast booking. There's a new program called Traft. The link, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. If you are not automating your booking, and that means recording your podcast with a co-host, finding a suitable time to do that. If you've got an engineer on the line, finding a suitable time that works for everybody. Most podcasters, we use it for guest. When can we do an interview? I mentioned doing this interview earlier. I booked it through an automated calendar. Said, here's when I'm available. You find a time that's available for you. Pick it. It will automatically go on my schedule. That's what Traft does, but it can do that with more than one person. So if you have an editing business, a production business, an engineering business, and you need to listen in on somebody else's podcast so you can edit it, record it, do whatever it is that you do for those guys, this will work for you. If you've got a co-host and a guest, you've got to get three people on the line, you and those two guys, this will do that for you. Are there ways to work around this? Yeah, you can do like I do. 2 p.m. every Tuesday. That's when I record the radio show. It's me, the producer, the engineer, and whoever the guest is. 2 p.m. Tuesday. We know that. Pick a Tuesday, we will be there. Everybody has their schedule cleared. But if you don't have that option because your schedule's changing around, maybe you just want a little bit more flexibility. You want to be able to do it whenever or whenever or not have to wait till the next Tuesday. You want to do it now. This is great for you. It's called Traft. It's automated scheduling for groups, and it is amazing. It's a special deal on it right now, newsletter.bigpodcast.com, 69 bucks. One-time payment, get you for life. When I was using Schedule Once, that was the one everybody recommended. Schedule Once, it worked for one person, 29 bucks a month. All right, well, two months of paying for Schedule Once is a lifetime of this, and it handles multiple people. So consider it, newsletter.bigpodcast.com has the link and more information. You can watch a video and find out if it will work for you or not. There is a money back guarantee, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Thanks for listening to Build a Big Podcast. If you have not gotten the email newsletter, do go get it. Do I need to say that URL again? Newsletter.bigpodcast.com. And if you go to bigpodcast.com, the main site, I've got some other things that will be of interest to you as well. I've got episode templates that are plug and play, 25 of them that will make your episode creation easy. These are proven templates. These are what listeners want, what they will download, what they will share with their friends. It's not a script. It is a framework. You can pop in what you're doing, make it work for your podcast. Again, I got 25 of them. So if a couple of them don't work for you, there are going to be some others that will. Bigpodcast.com. Subscribe to the podcast while you were there, and I'll see you on the next episode of Build a Big Podcast.